Hi, this is Kayla from the real world Las Vegas. Go big or go home. You're listening to Bring Your Torch with Jesse and Elaine. Welcome to another episode of Bring Your Torch. I'm Jesse. And I'm Elaine. And Elaine, we have a couple of things going on this week. We have the premiere of Celebrity Big Brother. We're going to talk about that. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about uh, the Gianni Versace show on FX, American Crime, American Crime Story? Yeah, because American Horror Story is is also done <laughs> It's by all them. the same, right? It's well, a horror story, well, no matter it, how you, know, you look we were, at it. We were talking about the show 911 before we started recording, and it's all done by the same guy. Uh, so we can kind of maybe loop that all together. I feel like... You know, you start out these podcasts in the worst way you could possibly start it out. Well, I'm doing the podcast with you, so of course it's starting out in the worst possible so way. Good. But I make the you best. You forgot to mention like Kylie Jenner having a baby a little bit. No, no, I did, I did not forget. South I just don't Africa's care. Africa's about to be in a, like a massive drought in a few weeks. Oh, so and, so a lot of people go on to reality TV podcasts here about and South I'm Africa. And I'm going to be rich off some Bitcoin, drought. and you're going to be completely broke because yeah. I invested in Bitcoin. You have like a new scheme like every other week. Like I'm, I'm going to buy like ten iPhones and sell them for a million dollars. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to invest in in Alibaba. I'm going to be a millionaire in a week. Like what are you even talking about? <laughs> And um, I don't want to get your blood pressure up, but we had the State of the Union, um, so yeah, yeah that happened. We, you, you can you can listen to me talk about that in some other podcasts, but you don't like me talking about that. So, what so is Kayla's going? coming on, yeah, and you just... convinced she's in love with you? No, no, she's. A... If you followed Kayla on Twitter, you know that the rumors of her having an affair, which were by your lady crush Melissa, uh, were un unfounded. Uh, no one is no one's backing up Melissa. Well, so, we're not even going to talk about it. We'll talk about it when she comes on the podcast. She she contacted me and says there's going to be some, uh, I guess, some important, some big time Kayla episodes coming up in the coming really? weeks. And she wants you know come on her podcast and give her side. So I'm excited to see what she has to say about that. Hopefully she makes it to the end. Um, the, the problem is that a lot of people that she is friends with in the show, I don't necessarily like. So I have to be very careful in what I say. God, you're rough. Well, you were the one bashing uh, Nicole last week. I think she's friends with Nicole. She has to be friends with whoever she can be friends with because she started out a year or two ago on a really rough patch. So yeah. she needs to make sure that she makes alliances. Well, we'll talk about that when she comes on in a couple of weeks. All right. Um, also, after last episode, if you listen, I, we discussed, discussed very briefly uh, a new MTV show coming out in a couple of weeks, Winter Break, Hunter Mountain. And I may or may not have mentioned that one of the cast members is from Connecticut, but from a town called Waterbury. And I may or may not have given or thrown a little shade at Waterbury. Well, uh, Carissa, who was on the show and is the one from Waterbury, the Water Sword podcast, yeah. and she's like, hey, man, why are you hating on Waterbury? And I'm like, oh, God. You know, whenever they call us out, you know how it is. We always hate things, and then when they come on our podcast, we love them. <laughs> so I was like, oh, no, we were just playing. She was actually just joking around. She was very friendly. Uh, we were talking. She actually went to school in my hometown, though, so we have some things in common, I think. So uh, when the show premieres, <laughs> we're going to get her back on here and, and talk to her about it. I'm excited about that. You know, we're we're making new friends along the way, even when we're insulting them. When and When is the show premiere? At the end of February, I think. I don't know. I don't know the exact date. Yeah, who cares? It's the listen, end of February. It's on MTV. I think it's going to be good. I will say that. Yeah, what's... It's the people who did Jersey Shorts, people who did Floribama Shorts. They're just branching out all over I the place. I just love these shows. They're my yeah. guilty pleasure. And you know, I, I think I said when it, uh, Floribama Shorts could be back for like 22 episodes. It's something insane. I'm like, wow. It only had eight or nine episodes. 22 episodes. Season. How much do you think they're getting paid per episode? Not much yet. You know, once they have. Well, like 10,000 a pop. How many are there? Like 10,000 a pop. 80,000? I don't think. I don't know. I, I you know, I, I maybe we can ask uh, Chris when she comes on, but I'm sure. They won't mention uh, money. No. Uh, people, people are private about those kind of things. So let's get into some of the new shows that are on. All uh, right. All right. So Celebrity Big Brother premiered uh, about an hour and 18 minutes ago as we're doing this podcast. And the first thing I noticed when I watched you this watched was it? yeah, there, there were some weird faces on here. Uh, you know, I, I weird faces. What does that mean? Like plastic surgery? Yeah, like tan yeah. mom, tanning mom? Like you know, what, what not, is that? I, I'm not one to judge somebody on their appearance, but like Mark McGrath, man, he's just looking a little like he's trying to hold Old? on to that youth. No, he's looking like he had his little work done. Like his face is a little too tight. It's too tight. For someone 
<laughs> I love tight. watching your face as you say his face is too tight. You have this and, shitty grin on your face. <laughs> and Brandy Glanville is, uh, you know, she's had a little work too. I, I think that if you took the makeup off, it would be kind of a, a horror show. She was also like 45, 10 years ago. Yeah. So well, she's not I'm, that young. Well, yeah, and I'm not throwing shade at her because of that, but it's... I'm, I'm I love for, Brandy. I want to see her just wreck it in that show. I'm one for just... Uh, you know, aging gracefully. Like if you if you're gonna start losing your hair, just let it go, man. Uh, don't get plastic surgery. You, you can Hollywood. Get, here's the problem: you get plastic surgery anywhere in your body other than your face, and then nobody will see it like, unless you want them to. But if you get plastic surgery to your face and it goes poorly, I mean, you're in you're trouble. Done. I mean, look yeah. at look at Meg Ryan. That's a big thing they sh they showed at a couple. Of, I forget what award ceremony it was, but she had a little bit too much work done, and she she was one of the prettiest girls in Hollywood. She was the guy, the girl that every guy wanted, the girl next door. Um, but it, it's not really their fault either. It's that How Hollywood, about um, Hollywood's Renee fault. Zellweger? Well, Didn't everyone not be able to re recognize her? I thought she looked great after yeah, she had that well, I think Renee theory. Zellweger kind of went the way of uh, Jennifer Grey, where they don't look bad, they just look different. You know, I, 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 although I think those initial pictures really made people go, what the heck's going on? I saw the third Bridget Jones's movie, and I thought she looked, yeah, she looked fine. She's pretty. I like, I'm, I'm a big Chicago fan. Not the, well, the, both the band and the movie, but she was the star in the movie. <laughs> so, but back to Celebrity Brother. So there was some- Wait, wait, wait. But the, have you ever seen the Spain Duchess of Alba? The what? What is this? Okay. So if you have time right now, if, if you're listening and you just want to see In the middle of this somebody, podcast. If you want to see somebody who has like the most botched plastic, plastic surgery on the face of this earth, just type in Spain plastic surgery princess and it's actually the Duchess that comes up and you'll see, um, I think it's the Duchess of Alba in Spain. She has um, the worst plastic surgery you'll ever see. Well, we're going to be talking about go. the Jenny Versace miniseries that are on today. Google uh, Donatella Versace. I mean, she... Pitch. No, no, no. The Duchess of Spain is like okay. 10 times worse than, than Donatella Versace. Well, then uh, maybe I'll just let that one go. Um, I was actually impressed with the Big Brother house. They, I mean, it's obviously the same house they use there in Studio City, but it definitely looked nicer. It looked different. They were able to change it up enough that I really couldn't uh, figure out what's going on. And they did the first competition inside, like hanging from things and things splattering on them inside. Inside the house. Why didn't they do it outside? I mean, maybe it was outside. They made it. They maybe they made it look like it was inside because they made it look like an award ceremony. I'm not going to say who won because it did just air, and I don't want to spoil it. Really? For Is it somebody it. you think I would like? I mean, I don't think you'd be offended by this person if that's what you're saying. I'm offended by all of them. Yeah, well, except like two or three of them. By you too. <laughs> It's so dealless. Um, I, I just so my reservation about this whole season is that they're only in there for how many weeks? Three weeks. Three weeks. There's multiple celebrities going home every week. Yeah, but my point is, is like when you have three months of living inside a house in complete solitude, you start to lose your mind, right? But three weeks, yeah, I can kind of deal with three weeks. You know, I might get crazy a little bit, but three months. I'm talking racist crap. I'm talking about oh, politics. I'm, talking, I'm, talking, talking, I'm saying. Are you saying after three months you become a racist? <laughs> that's, I mean, no. that's literally what you just said. <laughs> are you an insane person? No, you start saying like things about like your your bowels, and you talk about like your dietary needs, and three weeks you're still well, it's kind different of now than it a was. Bit. You know, early on in the Big Brother show, because. Uh, now you take away my iPhone, my iPad. Like, I forget how much I rely on those. Just like, for Three information, weeks without just your for iPad boarding. It's I don't, not I mean, that big of a deal. Three months is huge. You give me a week without an iPad or my iPhone, I think I'm losing my mind. I think I'm going cuckoo for cocoa. Puffs. So you think after three weeks you'll just be totally normal and you can kind of adapt to it? You mean it's like going cold turkey to get off of drugs? They just lock you in a room and you go <laughs> insane, then eventually you come out okay on the other side? No, three months is far worse. No. So I really like Meta World Peace, or Ron Artest, he was a basketball player, and of course, I'm a Lakers fan, he spent some time in the Lakers. I really like Shannon Elizabeth, too, and I was surprised. She's not as, I was worried people would be threatened by her, because she's really pretty, but she's gotten to be, like she's like 43, I think, and she's still pretty, but she's like aged into her, looks very well. So that she's like a pretty woman who's in her early 40s, where the, was it Ariadna Gutierrez, she's like the hot young tamale yeah. down there. But, uh, I mean, Amarosa is Amarosa. 
Uh, she's. I'm already having issues. You think issues she's with going? Her. You think she's going home soon? I think. No, I think the uh, watch the show. I think the producers are probably going to do whatever they can to keep her around. To keep know. her on. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So this first episode during the challenge, why we they were hanging from like basically Oscar statues and as it spun around and, and, you know, crap was spewed on them. They had former uh, people coming out of uh, Paul from the last couple of seasons and Love Rachel, Paul. and Rachel Riley, you know, no one gets in yeah. between me and my man. They came out and they sang like an award song, Mr. <laughs> Spectacular, Jesse, the guy with the big muscles. He showed up. Jessica and Cody from last season were in the crowd. I mean, this is some synergy, corporate synergy. It's a crossover between former Big Brother people who are now on The Amazing Race coming back to the Big Brother. Uh, yep. it, was, it was interesting, but it really seems that the women are going to be stupid enough to trust Amorosa. I mean, she's just... she's, the she's Okay, all right. Burp, burp, burp. Back <laughs> it up. The women are going to be stupid enough to... Well, to Trust Amorosa. So there are, are there are Please there are eleven us, there are eleven really people. Exist. There are six women. There are five men. So the women came together and wanted to have an all girls alliance. And this was spearheaded by Amorosa. But as we all know, Amorosa is like a prey mantis who is mating. She bites the head off of her mate right. when she's done. I wouldn't trust Amorosa for, as far as I can throw her, which admittedly isn't that far. But uh, you know why, right? Because she worked for the Trump administration. <laughs> That's kind of the icing on the cake. Let's yeah. be serious. Well, someone, someone brought up and goes, oh, yeah, you worked for – well, she goes – I, I was I was an apprentice on a TV show on The Apprentice. And he goes, oh, who did you apprentice for? <laughs> you didn't know what it was? <laughs> she goes, oh, Donald Trump. And he goes, oh, well, I'm not going to be the first person to bring that up. <laughs> so oh my God, it's going to so come great. up. So, and by the way, tonight it starts Big Brother After Dark on, was it Pop? Is that what channel it's on now? Pop those, TV, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think that's where they have Big Brother After and Dark. I, and I have, C I have CBS All Access, so I'll be watching them while working. I have it on my second screen just watching them sleeping. And, well, and, you have the live feeds. Yeah, it's, it'll be fun. So do you think any of them will hook up? No, because if you look, Mark McGrath, he's married. Um, Chuck Liddell, he's married. Uh, Russ, uh, the intern, Russ the intern. He's gay, first of all, but he's also, I think, it looked like he was either in a relationship or married. Um, Chuck, uh, who was the other person? The guy from Big Time Rush. He may be single. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even remember. Big, we don't even know who this guy no. is, Big Time Rush. And then Meta World Peace. I mean, I don't think he's going to. So I don't think anybody will. Girls I and girls? I don't know. I would definitely be talking about, I mean, Shannon Elizabeth. I, I'm, like, I'm liking the older, like, you know, I'm 36. She's 43. She's not that she's much down, older than me. dude. Uh, you look at her. She's she aged. You keep well. talking about her. I, I like it. Hey, you know, American right. Pie came out when I was the, the summer before my senior year, and American Pie two came out the summer, the first summer after freshman year of college. So those movies, you know, really were uh, going on during a very important time in my life. So, and also she was super hot and naked in them, so that adds to stuff as well. And my cousin, for a few years, lived across the hall in New York City. From Jason Biggs, the main character, the main actor in those movies. That's awesome. It sucks. Small that. world. This is the same cousin who knows Kyle Cook from Summer House. And we, I was talking to him and his girlfriend, and you know, they're they're moving in, and Jason Biggs came out to so, you know just do whatever. He lives like he lives in the building, and yeah. some, guy, some guys like, oh, he's the pie effer, isn't he? <laughs> it's like <laughs> the, that kid movie came out. 19 years ago, and he's still being called the pie effer. I won't, I won't say the actual word because this is a family friendly podcast. But, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. So the, the challenge is uh, starting to heat up. They actually had two episodes of the challenge last night. The second episode was like CT. What do you think uh, about this season? Um, I'm liking. It. I think it's a little wacky, but I'm but I'm digging it. The, the second episode was CT watching what happened so far this season and saying what he would have done differently. He he jokingly said the reason he isn't on the season because uh, through all his years he just he just doesn't have any vendettas. Everybody loves him, and then they all just started laughing. Yeah, right. I'm so, sure they could have found somebody. <laughs> yeah, well, too many people probably. Um, you know, he he tried to eat this people at certain times. I mean, poor Adam. Though I guess they they've made up, um, but he's punched several people. But uh, this episode was really weird. They have this mysterious note going around, several notes. So they found it in the room of Jemmy, Car Maria, Brittany, and Veronica. And the note said, just so you know, this is on Brittany's bed, by the way. Just so you know, every time you're not in the room, the girls are talking shit about you. And <laughs> the first thing they go to is, it's Marie. Then they go, maybe it's Shane. Uh, they're just blaming people left and right. And I actually don't think it was Marie because she actually seems legitimately like pissed and perplexed. They think it's her. Uh, you know, I'm not the biggest Marie fan, but no. I don't I don't think it's her. 
All right. I have no idea who it is at that point. No, well, there's a second towards the end of the show that said, you are you are getting played so hard you don't even realize it. I'm wondering if it's Nicole. I and mean, I think they're just trying to screw with us. In the previews for next week, they show uh, Nicole laying down in bed and talking to Bananas. And he's like, if she goes, if I tell you something, will you tell anybody else? And then people are starting to freak out over this note. Or maybe it's Kayla. Maybe that's why she wants to come on the show because she's writing these notes. Who knows? Maybe. Um, I don't think she would do that, though. But I, mean, I, think I could funny. be wrong. I think it's funny how they show the person going in, but they blur out the entire thing. So you can't tell whether it's a guy or a girl or who it is. They're really milking this thing for all they can. So creepy. Well, it's not, what? The, the person's leaving the note or what MTV is doing to the, per, the video of the person? The MTV is doing. Yeah, I mean, leaving notes, I think, is kind of cool. It's kind of throwback. They don't have cell phones. People. You can't send people texts. Yeah, my, my new sidekick. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> like back in the day. Um, so this competition was kind of interesting. Sylvia and, and Natalie couldn't do it because they were too sick, which is interesting because Sylvia lost her grenade because she wasn't there to use it, which you know, could have made a mess. Uh, it was this underwater competition, and it wasn't that it was underwater Although I guess a lot of people didn't like that. I said it was underwater at night, and there are apparently sharks in the water. And, you know, I don't do sharks. I don't have a problem with the water, but I have a fear of sharks, much like the president <laughs> does. Uh, I don't think I would have liked that competition. No, I wouldn't. But, you know, I feel like what's the statistics on sharks, though? You're not. You're fine if you get in the water. To, to mention the Unless person who gets cut eaten. your arm off in the middle of the deep ocean, I think you're good. Well, you know, when I look like at that, remember you ever that movie Soul Survivor? I think where the, I think it was Carrie Underwood in it or something, where she was a surfer and she gets her arm bitten off by a shark, and then she like, comes back and like she surfs <laughs> again. If you get your arm bitten off by a shark. And you go back in the ocean. I mean, that was their warning. Stay out of our world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, now, now I'm actually rooting for the shark. Like, do not get. You're rooting for the. <laughs> only Jesse would root for the shark. Well, get the hell out of the ocean, man. Those things are beasts. I don't like beasts. Uh, I'm I just, just destroyed them all. Sure, it'll screw up the entire ecosystem. Uh, but ecosystem? Echo, ecosystem. Is, is that what we're calling it now? The ecosystem? I once had a green bird and named it Echo after the eco ecosystem. <laughs> <laughs> that was a parakeet like 25 years ago. No, it doesn't matter. So, anyways, this underwater competition, the teams were split into different groups, uh, but they all ran at different, the course at different times. And they had to swim 150 yards underwater, uh, or 100, 150 feet, 150 yards would have been insane. 150 feet underwater between two boats while moving this. This ring basically threw out a rope along the way, and there were breathing stations set up between the yachts. Uh, and whichever team got the furthest uh, and the fastest wins. And I guess it seems easier, but I think a lot of, first of all, a lot of people freaked out about it being at night. I think that mentally, psychologically played into it. Yeah. And a lot of people were just bad at swimming. Or it was Joss, one of the British guys, like didn't put on his mask race, but went down and just filled with water. He had to come right oh, back up. Uh, that's like my worst nightmare, just being <laughs> suffocated underwater or being trapped underground like, either way. Like you, you'd be in steerage when the Titanic's going down, you just can't get out and the water's just creeping up slowly. Well, I don't have slowly. nightmares of that, but yeah, thanks for that, putting yeah, that yeah. In image in my head. Hey, you know, uh, I'm glad to help. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Kaylee did really well. So did Brad, so did Bananas, so did Tony. But in the end, the team of Bananas, Kyle, Zach, Kayla, and Tony won with Bananas, Tony, and Kyle being the fastest. Uh, and you know, we got into a situation again that happened last year. So a couple weeks ago, uh, Sylvia went actually went out there and actually ate a bunch of that gross crap, and yet Brad ended up putting her in to the uh, to the challenge. Uh, the kind of opposite happened this time. Brad swam swam really well, but they ended up putting Brad in. He was the the loser, and he was not happy. You know, as they keep saying, you know, Brad angry, Brad devolving, Brad has beard, <laughs> and you know, Brad is jacked now. But Brad's got to be what. Between my age and like early forties, and a lot of these yeah. kids are in their like mid twenties, and at a certain point, much like Tom Brady found out in the Super Bowl, uh, the age will. Well, he had a good game, so I can't say that. But the age will catch up with you, and when you play against a guy who's half, you know, half your age, literally, I don't know if he's going to have a chance to win. We don't know who he's going up against quite yet, but I don't know if I would put money on Brad. Um, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. So this troika of bananas, uh, Kyle and Tony ended up uh, putting or picking the top three, or the I guess you'd say the bottom three in this case, uh, Shane, Victor, <laughs> and Devin. 
And Victor, you know, I wasn't a big fan of him on Big Brother, but he seems like a relatively nice guy, and he's just talking to them, like, you know, what can I do to get out of the situation? You know, I don't have any beef with anybody. He's kind of helpless. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like upset Shane. Like, Ugh, he's just being nice and talking to them. And <laughs> Shane just kind of freaks Who's out. Nice? And And Victor had just been praising Shane at the beginning of the show, like, oh, he seems like a nice guy. And Shane's just going nuts. I, you know, I guess Shane's been doing this for a long time, too. He but, knows what makes ratings. Let's be you know, serious. Shane and Victor now have a now have a new vendetta. I think maybe Devin will get off scot-free. I don't I'll go see him at his brewery up in Massachusetts. So we'll see what happens next week. Um, so Vanderpump rules. The, uh, the the Schwartz twins showed up. I believe it's Brendan, Billy, and Bert. What's, uh, if you have twins, would you name them all with bees? I think that would drive me insane. Brendan, Billy, and Bert. And Bert. And then you have Thomas. Know. Thomas Schwartz's brother. Uh, so they come to town and get his makeover. Uh I don't really understand what's going on with these twins. Like they, it was a huge thing that came in for Tom's wedding. He made them seem like, seem like they were like special needs or like rednecks or Seriously, something. Seriously, like, oh, we almost couldn't make it to your wedding if Jackson and Sandoval didn't help us out. Like, these are these are people who are, I mean, they're in their early 20s, mid 20s, maybe even late 20s. I can't tell, but they're yeah, they seem like bumpkins. I don't know where they're from. <laughs> they seem like, but they seem like you know legitimately nice guys. So I'm happy they had a good time. One of them seems they really want to just move to L.A., but is too afraid to leave the other two. I, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, I guess more power to to Santa Ball and to Schwartz. They should all move to L.A. because then they can just get a place together and share it. We get a reality show show called The Brothers Schwartz. Schwartzy Brothers. Schwartzy Brothers TS Seven. So there was a fire at Sir, and and no one seemed to really care. Like you know, they're like, <laughs> they're like oh, there's a fire. Oh well, let's just keep having our parties and having the See You Next Tuesday event. He's like, like, see you next Tuesday. Like, oh, what? Oh, mm, mm, yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I like that the See You Next Tuesday is such a huge event that he has to go out and basically beg people to come into it. Well, like as he's running down the street, he's like, "Come, come to our like party at Sir." <laughs> Come to our party. It's see you next Tuesday. Do you, do you think he just does that for like S and G's, or do you think he's like serious about it? I really don't know. I mean, what, what happens if you're really there, or if he wasn't being filmed? I, I just don't know. I, James is a, is a tough nut to crack. You know, is he a douchebag or is he not? Is he good at his job, which is I guess DJing and producing things, or is like he men, not? Is he like women? Yeah, like it's hard to say. <laughs> I don't is know. Is he obsessed with his girlfriend, or is she just kind of? Or is, or is he, is he longing for Logan? It's I don't. Weird. I don't know. What did you make with the whole thing with Stassi? Where Stassi's like, everybody was crying this damn episode. Stassi's like, oh, Ariana's being mean and telling Billy that I, you know, hate She's transgender racist, people yeah. and stuff and racist. Yeah. First of all, I, I want to tell Stassi that transgender isn't a race. Or, although maybe she thought because she was saying something about Black Lives Matter, that's where the racist stuff came in. But came in. Um, but. You know, I mean, what do you think about Billy? An interesting character or person or character to have on the the show this year, I think. But you know, it really, I think, has the, they they really value the whole you know transgender gay trying, life. Yeah, I think they're trying to put it on display for yeah. on TV so that people are aware of obviously transgender. Jax was basically like, "I'll bang you before I knew you're transgender." Is yeah, that so, what Jax said? Some along those lines. Very, very good. I mean, she she looks very good. I, I have to give her credit. But uh, she went on Stassi's podcast. Stassi's like, "Oh, I mean, I know we take our podcast." Kind of seriously, but she's like, "Oh, my podcast is my life." Wah, wah, wah. You know, I didn't think what Stassi said was offensive. You know, it, even if it was offensive, I would have been like, "Whatever." I think she was whatever. just trying to be funny, to be honest. Yeah, but I would have been like, "Whatever." Like, I, I've tried in my older age not to be offended by things, especially when people aren't trying to be offensive. That there's there's a difference, and life's too short just to get angry about everything. But uh, but I'll always take our inside over Stasi. I, I wonder if, if it's because. I didn't watch Vanderpump Rules live when Stassi was a like queen bee. When I started watching, she was off the yeah. show, and then she came back. So she doesn't have like the power over me of like, you know, this is my show, this is my thing. And she really has given up the show. It's not her show at all. But I, so I like Stassi when she was on the show the first two seasons, and then she obviously fell off. And Ariane, Ariana, she was. She didn't really interact with Stassi in the first few no. seasons. She, well, she and then popped she up got, towards the end of the second season, I think. Yeah, and then she started coming into her own, which is great. But I like both of them, but now I kind of don't like either of them. Ariana's definitely gotten weird this year with it not wanting to be touched. Stuff. I mean, the, I'm not saying weird or bad, but it seems like she has issues. And I, she she's seems kind of fighting with everyone, whereas before it was just, let's just get along and be happy and not care. But now she seems a little bit more bitter, more angry. 
I don't know what she it is. She seems to be in a better place on uh, Watch What Happens Live. Everybody seems to be in a better place. You know, I found really? Kristen, Kristen and Katie all love Lala uh, last week. Or maybe it was after this. Uh, it was probably Monday after the episode of, uh, of Vanderpump Proposals Rules and Watch What Happens Live. Katie actually said she went to Vegas on the private jet with Lala and her, and her boyfriend, which she, in the past she had like, made jokes about. She basically said, yeah, I had to eat crow on that one. So Lala has basically come through and made everybody like her, which is interesting. Yeah, until the plane goes down. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I shouldn't well, joke about that. It's, it's kind of like watching – there's a new show on – I think it's Fox called LA to Vegas where it's about flights <laughs> basically fly back and forth between LA and Vegas all the time. And uh, I mean if you're in LA, you're – Wait, how is this a show? show? Wait. It's good. It's, I like it. It's funny. It's uh, Wait, yeah, so Dylan, Dylan McDermott is on it. Uh, Who's on it? What Dylan is this show? Elliot of Vegas. It's like a half an hour comedy about uh, stewardesses and or stewards or flight attendants, I guess you call them now, the pilot and the crazy people who fly back. I mean, there's like, one of the characters is a gambling addict that he flies back every week. Another one's a stripper who flies back on the weekends to do stripping. So is this a reality show? It's no, not it's, scripted. No, it, no, it's a sitcom. It's a TV show. Oh, okay. That's awesome. It's worth watching. Um so what do you think about this party that Lisa threw in her half burned down restaurant uh, for becoming the editor in chief of Beverly Hills Mag- Lifestyle Magazine? First of all, was this you know, actually what what restaurant was this in? It was in this Sur. Was it was, Sur? It was, it was it? the other side of Sur. Yeah, it was it was weird. Do you um, like that photo I posted on our Twitter? Well, you're wondering why we couldn't get a reservation because the place was burning down. I don't know. I said because they always have the chairs and tables flipped in the back of Sur. Uh, Do you ever notice that when they're all sitting there and they're just like <laughs> upside down? <laughs> No. When I was there, I took a photo, and they were all upside down again. This is in September. But I'm just – I thought that, that – they always make Sir look so much bigger than it actually is. Well, I, I might go there this uh, It's fall. a shoebox. It's an absolute shoebox. I'm, I'm likely going to L.A. this fall, see the 49ers play, so I may go to Sir while I'm there, find out. Yeah, good uh, time. Good job wasting your time. <laughs> I'll just be like, where's Jax? <laughs> Where's sweaty Jack? Jack, Jack, can I can I get some of your sweat, please? Oh, I'll sell it on eBay. Um, so he was the goat cheese balls. <laughs> he was he was really late to the like an hour late to this party, and Lisa was pissed, which I think she had the right to be. But I like that Jack's point. He goes, "Why does everybody like make me out to be the a hole? They've all they all fight with each other. They've all cheated on each other. They've all slept with each other. They all get drunk and do stupid things. And I'm the jerk." And he is right. Like, yeah, he does the stuff maybe a little more than everybody else, but everybody else, they, like, they're pretty much the group of the worst friends ever assembled in the world that's why they're on tv yeah really yeah really Uh, but i also liked his point about i'm just serving really really uberly rich people free drinks so why the hell do i have to be here early this is like oh darling my son has to be a bartender it's like oh life's so hard he has to work oh no If, maybe if you told Ken to stop loving the dog and maybe giving some love to his children, it would be such a big deal. <laughs> um, so That's bad. What, what do you think of the story with Katie falling through a skylight and like That's cutting her face F- open and F- having her jaw? Oh my god! It was, I didn't was, realize that. It was back in two thousand nine. Uh, she definitely looked like younger. Her face is all messed up. She's like, eh, I, I was supposed to start it, sir, but my face is all screwed up. Uh, it was really strange. What was worse, her falling through the skylight and cutting up her face or having party planner Kevin Lee tell her that she's fat? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing worse than the people who are attractive gets, get mad when people call them fat. Like, dude, you're married you know and you're good-looking. moment where you're down. just, like, speechless from the question that was just asked to you? That was messed up, Jesse. <laughs> What was worse, falling through a skylight or Kevin Lee telling you're obese? I, I think so. Geez, you added obese. <laughs> Say she's obese. <laughs> Who says that, Jesse? She's not like, get in my belly. <laughs> We're never having anyone on this podcast ever again because this stuff oh, is You're the one who, who very clearly upset, uh, offended Sheena, Shayna on uh, – Sheena. Sheena. It's like my <laughs> problem with calling her Ariana. I call her Ari- – it's Ariana. You like call you, her Sheen. Shayna, Sheena. You like made some comment on Sheena's nose and she like wrote back and yelled at us on, on Twitter and I had to like smooth it over. Like basically my co-host is an idiot. Don't pay attention to her. That's <laughs> what you get for being in the public eye. Uh, so you hey, want... We get a lot of crap for doing this podcast. Yeah, I get people call, telling us all the time that we're I'm stupid. Maybe not you, but I'm stupid. No, mostly just you. Yeah, me, me. But yeah, I mean, when you're in the public eye, you have to take the criticism. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, you're right. 
So you want to talk about this? Uh, the people, well, it's not the people versus Eddie Simpson, the uh, the, the assassination of Johnny Versace. You want to talk about? I, I keep saying it should be called the Life and Times of Andrew Cunanan. Okay, these transitions from like Vanderpump roles when we were full on to yeah. now we're talking Gianni Versace. Is it on FX or Paramount? I can't even remember it's, what now. The Waco is on Paramount. This is on FX. This is a Ryan Murphy show. They're always on either Fox or FX. So good. Um, yeah, I'm watching both of them, and I'm. Couldn't be more excited. Well, I, I'm watching this Gianni Versace show, and that's why I don't even know what the hell's going on. Like the last How do episode, you not what's going on? Do you not know the story? Like the, the story last episode of the show had literally was. nothing to do with Gianni Versace. It was about it was all about Andrew yeah, Cunanan, like killed, driving, like driving away, and like killing people. this guy and and doing stuff. No, well, it's more about Andrew Cunanan. It's about Gianni Versace. Hello, hello, Wikipedia. All you have to do is look up Gianni Versace death, Andrew Cunanan. Well, if I go to Nadia. Wikipedia, then why bother watching the show? I want to have things surprise me as I watch can, it. Like, kind of see how many people he might have killed before <laughs> Versace, and so you kind of have an idea of. If only he hadn't part. gotten caught before he met you. <laughs> oh my god. So, so what I'm do you think of this really show? Shoot you, myself. So, so you're liking it, huh? It's so like dark and like italian kind of like every dark time you see, italian like every time you see gianni versace and is like donatella versace is like oh i'm banging these men in miami and it's like this like dark side of the 1990s of this like gay culture and community in the in miami it's really creepy what yeah, do you you're, think? Like, and you're, a, you're a real big fan of Ricky Martin too right i love Ricky Martin i think they did a really good job of portraying the dark side of Miami in the nineties and that like the gay culture. Well, I've only been to Miami once for work, but I've been it once. Is, yeah. it, it's very hot. It's, it's, it's muy caliente. It's what I found just walking in a suit between one building to another. I was drenched and swept by the time I got there. They also have zombies there, so yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons we first met it because you were obsessed with zombies and I love zombies. Remember we went to a baseball game before we went to a bar and you ordered a zombie a zombie. I think I ordered like ten zombies, oh, and then we went to the baseball game. Well, the the Ryan Murphy that I'm more interested in is actually on Fox. It's actually airing right now as we're recording. It's called Nine One One. This isn't Rescue Nine One One. This isn't Reno Nine One One. It's just called Nine Dash One Dash One. Um, it's got a great cast. It has Connie Britton, who a lot of people know from uh, Pride Night Light. She was Mrs. Coach. It has Angela Bassett, who I think most people know. She's in a lot of movies. Love her. Uh, it has Peter Krause, who was in uh, Sports Night. He was in Six Feet Under. He was in Parenthood, which ended a few uh, years ago. Just a, a good quality actors. And Ryan Murphy, as we know from the People vs. O.J. Simpson, as we know from Gianni Versace, uh, as we know from American Horror Story, from Scream Queens, from all of these, uh, it's done a lot. Yeah, all these things. Uh, Nip Tuck, even Glee. Uh, he's he's very much over the top in a lot what he do does. And this show, like every episode, it's, it's about people who work for a fire department, work for a you know first responders, and who work for a, a police department. And every week something insane happens. Like one episode, one of the uh, main characters or you know the side main characters is driving, gets in a car accident, and has like a rebar you know thing go through his his head, but yet he somehow lives. He's like, oh what happened in another episode uh these couple of guys are on a roller coaster and they go flying off mid-ride and like die uh one episode of plane crashes it, it's just the most insane things you've ever seen but it's fun like it's people okay. want to say it's stupid but it's stupid fun i wish more people could just you know appreciate stupid fun as opposed to having it be really good or real, real stupid. bad Fun. Like this, so like like, this podcast is stupid fun. Is know? it stupid fun? I, maybe it's I'm just not stupid. I can't tell. I don't think it's stupid. So <laughs> there you go. I think it's smart and I'm totally bored. Yeah. It's not yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. It's not fun. Well, uh, the, the last thing we'll really talk about uh, on this episode is just The Bachelor. And, you know, Elaine, we talk about this every week. I am slowly losing my will to live oh God, or to watch no. it at least uh, as as it gets less crazy and it's more about women going, oh, I love Ari, who I only met a couple of weeks ago. It makes you want to vomit. There's no chemistry between Ari and any of these girls, by no. the way. They, they want to be famous. I mean, there was a tough story that Ari told this week. It's one time I actually really felt bad for him. He told the story that before he was even on The Bachelorette, he was with a girl who got pregnant and you know, he was traveling a lot for – for his race car driving thing. And she called him one day and said, I lost the baby. That was the worst it. story ever, by the way. And, and you know, don't, I won't be here when you come home. I mean, it's the reaction to people who heard it was not normal, but 
I mean, that's that's a that's how do you react to that? It's it's a very sad story, but to be I'm honest, sorry. Though, I think he was telling whatever chick he was talking to at the time. I think he told her that story to get her to open up because she. They were walking around Paris completely mute. <laughs> and that's when you know you don't belong. I mean, I've been on dates with girls I thought I liked, but then I'm like thinking just really, what can I talk about with this girl? What can I say next? And if you have to really think about it really hard, uh, you're probably not a good match. You know, the people that you belong no, with, no. Or that you're a good match, it just comes naturally. You don't have to force the conversation. Exactly. And especially when you're in Paris, like if all you can say when you look at the Notre Dame is wow. And wow. you have nothing else to say. You got problems, man. Ooh, uh, I mean, I I love my girl Becca M. As always, uh, she's too pure for this she universe. She looks like Betty Boop. Uh, she is so cute. I like that she. If you notice, she pulls off the, the no makeup look a lot. She just goes oh natural because she has I mean, the natural beauty. She's a very pretty face. They went to the the group date was at Moulin Rouge. Hey, sister, go, sister, soul, sister. She did a really good job with that. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, they obviously went out there like sexy can can girls and these. Tight outfits that were very revealing. <laughs> love that. Oh yeah, of course I did. I was like, oh, I, I started wake. I stopped fast forwarding and then woke back up, perked back up a bit. Uh, but it looks like she's gonna be probably gone. I mean, next week she's crying. I, I don't think she goes to the to the hometown dates. Uh, I, I don't. I think she's gonna use this as a springboard to whatever she does next. I mean, if she goes to paradise. I mean, the girls would be the men will be fighting, putting each other off, trying to get her. I think. But I don't know if she'll go to paradise. You gonna be sad if she does? No, I, I've come to grips that it just never happened. Even though she's, <laughs> even though she's a young, young, twenty-two uh, year old lady. She's like barely legal. Hey, she's attracted to a thirty-six year old on national TV right now. I am also thirty-six years old, so I think I have a There's shot. There's some hope for you, yeah. <laughs> The other big thing that happened this episode was Crystal going home. They had a two-on-one date with Kendall, and Crystal is just oh so cocky. Do you think she's gonna like come back and stab everyone? Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Could she? Could you imagine? They she's waiting for the person to come out of the limo so we can propose to her, and it's just <laughs> a dead bloody body falls out, and then she, then she walks out with a knife like you're mine, Ari. You're mine. <laughs> she also went home too. She was the in, initial villain, the original villain of this season for one episode until Chris just kind of snatched away from her. Uh, this happens every every ep season, though, that there's one kind of bitchy chick. It usually happens more with the women, I think, with the men, where, and you think she should go home because everybody hates her, but she sticks around a couple weeks longer than she should, and then she goes home. It happened with Olivia a couple seasons ago, too. Yeah, but it always ends up, like, towards the end, there's these girls that he keeps around. Every It happens with every bachelor that they keep around, and he's just not quite sure if the girl likes him. I, I don't think any of the girls know if they actually like him. I think they just want to get, get on TV. Totally, you know, they've, they've committed totally right. to dating him, yeah. but do they really actually like him? No. All right, so in coming weeks, we're going to be talking about Waco a little more, which, again, my cousin, Skip, is a co-producer on. You, you're, you, you hear people talking about that down, down in your neck of the woods because you are in Texas. Waco, yes. It's so good. And actually, I bought these really awesome 80s glasses, you know, late 80s, early like 90s the aviator glasses. type things? No, no, no. I mean, these glasses, and I'll post a photo on Twitter um, for everyone, but they pretty much cover, like, from the middle of my forehead all the way down from, like, to my center cheeks. They're just huge, like, glass, like, reading glasses, right? Like grandma glasses? Yeah, 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 but, like, huge, round Round shaped glasses. Like, like something bar Barb would wear on Stranger Things. <laughs> Bigger than that. Bigger than that. Oh, huge. Um, huge. Huge. And um, you know, I like to call them my David Koresh glasses because although his aren't as big, he they're just so bad looking. You know, David Koresh. That guy was just absolutely mental. And you also want to watch the Unabomber show. It's been on Netflix. I do. Have you, yeah, did you I've, hear about the show? Yeah, I've, I've, it's been out for a, quite some time. I've heard some good things about it. I haven't gotten around to watching it quite yet. But, uh, you know, these these are the things that are in vogue these days, true crime well, stories about I love people. it. And I can't wait till they cover the Monica Lewinsky, Bill Clinton scandal. Because they've done OJ. They've done, you know, Monica. Well, they're supposed or, to be doing. They did Tanya Harding. So, I mean, it's natural. <laughs> They're supposed to be doing uh, – I mean, I think this season of – instead of being – Johnny Versace was originally supposed to be Hurricane Katrina. So, okay, I don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm just telling you what they're going to do. see a good, doing. like, scandal, like a good white-collar scandal. A good white-collar scandal. Like Oval Office, you know, cigar 
there's I don't know like people getting clubbed in knees like I want to see a good scandal like clubbed that. In knees. All right. Well. Um, okay. Well, <laughs> on that note, just remember uh, to go to our website at www.bringmeyourtorch.com for all kind of goodies. I probably have to update that website, so I apologize if it's a little behind. Uh, you know, life what? gets in the way. What's going on with it? I, don't know, I just got updated, and you know who has time. All right. So, I don't. Yeah. And uh, after you listen to this podcast, just remember that you may have come here as a stranger, but you're leaving as a friend. We'll see you next time on Bring Me Your Torch. Bye.